I have learned quite a bit about EXXI and I want to pass along that learning to you, at least the networking aspect of it, because I certainly spent a great deal of time that I hope I will be uh, sparing you from it. So this is my EXXI setup and has a static address of 200 and that's the one that I uh, manually set up on the actual appliance. I'm using a physical appliance for this due to the great amount of uh, memory that I will be requiring. Those no longer fits into my VMware Fusion environment. Now, there's also in all these environments something called vSphere. And it says this interface is pretty much the same, although there are many things that you can do in vSphere that you cannot in EXXI. Particularly, I'm going to talk some more about it, uh, the capability of launching this remote console and being able to do copy-paste, which is very essential. To say essential, rather. So all these virtual machines that you see in here, they are completely isolated. ESXi has its own firewall, very actually not very uh, friendly to uh, to work with. So, and the idea is, on, is to actually keep this isolated from everything else by design. So let's, let me actually go to the whiteboard. So in this ESXi, I'm going to have all these bunch of uh, Red Hat machines, and in when you install VSXi, there is the concept of a virtual switch. So I received this appliance where ESXi is already installed, and by default, it creates this switch, virtual switch called vSwitch0, as we see here. And there is another concept called the portrait group. I will explain this in a second. That is really what you uh, select when you configure the machine. But the important point in here is that in order to create any virtual switch, you need to have it connected in the actual applying itself to a live, meaning a, uh, it's not just a, that the port is there. It has to be connected to something that brings the LAN uh, port up to a uh, live LAN connection. So, And that's not a problem because in my case, I connected that to my physical router, which happens to be PFSense, but that's a physical PFSense, but that's irrelevant. It can be any router that provides DHCP, let me actually draw all that. So it, it provides DHCP, but however, my DHCP, and you'll see, maybe I'll show that later, I have excluded the range of the uh, 200 and up because this needs to be static and, and I don't necessarily know the MAC address of the EXXI. So my DHCP range is outside 200, so I can physically assign EXSI from the monitor, the console of the appliance, an address of 200, and I can access it. I can take from my network any browser and put this IP address, and I get to the uh, to the EXSI console that I just showed you before. Let me actually show it back here. Okay. As you see, that's the IP address that I use. When I install vCenter, I assign it an address of 230. And that's also static as well. And when I put that address is that I get to my vSphere environment, as you see here. So whenever I go into any kind of the any one of the VMs, when we edit it to assign the network connection, it has one network adapter, and uh, more on that LAN uh, cloud pack for security later. But uh, this is what you select. You, in reality, you don't select the virtual switch. What you select is the port group. However, when we go to VM network we can see that that VM network port group is actually assigned to that switch 
that is called V switch zero, as you see here. And I'm going to do, I'm going to define another switch later. So you'll see me doing this uh, in, in subsequent videos, which is physically attached to this VMNIC3 Ethernet adapter. And you see that they are live, they are connected. And th that's denoted by that green color there. The open switch, the the open shift environment that I will be doing requires all these VMs to be to gather the IP address by DHCP but fixed by MAC address meaning every one of these I, I can assign them a physical address and corresponding to that physical address more on that later uh, they need to get a, a specific uh, IP and has to be all the same and they can boot the the uh, from the from the LAN and again that is uh, that will come later as well so in order to do that and that's in order to conclude this introductory video what I start showing the actual configurations uh, later what we are going to be doing is we're going to install a virtual PF sense okay that virtual PSN that you see me installing in a separate video will have a one connection that will be selected to the VM network one, obviously to go out, and one LAN that is going to be connected to another switch. That switch that I have created by going into network, and we can actually see it in here, if we go under networking, we see that I created this LAN dash CP4S, which is attached to a switch that is LAN without the dash CP4S, and is connected to a another Ethernet adapter that has to be live in order to be able for you to define the connection. And you can only assign one port group to one physical adapter. So the only Ethernet that we had uh, is already occupied by the standard. VMware network which we cannot use for this because all this machine needs to be served by a, a different router other than my physical router here at home. So that virtual switch LAN CP4S that is assigned to that port group LAN dash CP4S needs to also be connected to a live Ethernet jack and this actually is something that may save you a great deal of time uh, when you play for this because you see that it will never be shown to you when you are creating it it will not show you that because it needs to be live it needs to be green it needs to be connected to something so what i did in my case is next to that appliance i had a printer uh, and i actually connected that printer to that jack we are not going to be conducting any traffic there but i need this to be alive and to be green in order to be assigned it. again that can save you a good deal of time and grief so that's what I did and that's what it's live probably if you put a loopback adapter it would also work uh, one of those jack that you know put transmit with receive and vice versa but uh, you know I just had the printer there so I just put an Ethernet cable put it there boom and was able to successfully create this uh, virtual switch so as you can see the networking of ESXi is completely different to Fusion or, or VMware uh, desktop. Uh, there's no bridge, for example. I have not been able to find any bridging capabilities and the old, you know, NAT bridge and, and host adapter uh, that doesn't seem to exist here. It's completely different. This is more on the cloud for intended for the cloud to provide full isolation. But that isolation, it, it's get, it may get and will get in the way and I'll show you how we uh, deal with that when we are uh, uh, designing the things. For example, one of the things that gets in the way is that fact that we cannot do copy-paste. So imagine we're going to be firing uh, Firefox from one of these virtual machines and we're going to be doing some configuration. But you cannot do copy-paste. So if you have your MAC addresses or whatever it is that you want to put, uh, modify files, etc., uh, copy-paste won't work if your browser is fired from here you cannot get from outside 
into there. So you need to fire the browser from within one of the VMs and therefore you don't have the, the, the capability of doing uh, copy paste now. And that's that's the next video that I that I will show. When you want to use copy paste, you need to launch whatever interface you are, you are whatever VM you are launching using this launch remote console. And there is a setting because by default, for security reason, copy paste will not work. So this video is getting a little too long. Let me stop it here, and in the next one, I'll show you how to enable copy paste and then we'll do the installation of PFSense and move along.